Turn over to Revelation chapter 8. I want to read verses 10 and verse 11 tonight. Revelation chapter 8, verse 10 and verse 11. Hope you've enjoyed today. Hope you've had a good Lord's Day. But uh, as we preach through the book of Revelation, I hope you're studying ahead. Gives you an opportunity to do that. So Revelation chapter 8, 10 and 11. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Father, we thank you for today, and we thank you for this assembly, Lord. We thank you for each one that's come out to the house of God. Lord, we just ask you to help us as we fellowship together that Jesus Christ will be in our midst and, Lord, that you will be uh, the most important thing in our lives. Now, that you'll be the, the leader of this church and, Lord, that we will follow you. Now, we pray that you'll help us to be soul winners. Lord, help us to care about people, to have a burden for people. Help us to win souls. Comfort us and be with us. And we praise you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to preach on the third trumpet tonight. The third trumpet. You know, we come to the third trumpet, and these trumpets signal different judgments that God sends on the earth. And they are similar to the judgments that God sent uh, on, the, on the nation of Exodus back in the Old Testament. And those judgments were sent to judge Egypt because of the way they had mistreated God's people. So these trumpet judgments are no doubt designed to judge the world for denying God and for persecuting his church. In these judgments, it's always God's will that people repent. God is about saving people. And we need to fail. I will remind you that as we go through the book of Revelation, as we see some of these, these terrible plagues and some of these things that we see that are going to happen in the future, because God doesn't just judge sin. And there is a time when people can go past that point, and, and God does send judgment. He took the, the nation of Israel over into, or the nation of Judah over into Babylon. But you know, God's purpose is for people to repent and get saved. And I believe these judgments are literal. I can find no excuse for, for spiritualizing these trumpet judgments. Uh, to the third trumpet, some have symbolized this great star as, as an apostate teacher. There's all kinds of guesses. Some people have guessed uh, Magus and some people have uh, uh, guessed Origen. But once you, once you start symbolizing something, there's no end to the, the interpretations that you can put upon it. But I see no reason, I see no indication here that these are symbols or symbolism. I believe that these are literal trumpets. I believe these are literal plagues that God will cast on the earth during the tribulation period. You know, the third trumpet signals the falling of a great star from heaven. It falls and poisons one-third of the rivers and fountains and sources of water of the earth. And this star is given the name. It is called Wormwood. And I want to preach tonight about the significance of the name of this star. This star is called Wormwood. First of all, Wormwood is a judgment God uses against those who commit the sin of idolatry. In Deuteronomy, the 29th chapter, verses 17 and 18, And ye, sh and ye have seen their abominations and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them. Lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations. Lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall. And here's this word, gall and wormwood. Idolatry, the Lord says here to the nation of Israel, is like, is like 
wormwood. It's bitter. And in God's eyes, it's a terrible thing. Moses spoke here uh, to this generation of Hebrews and, and who had survived the 40 years. If you remember the history here, you know, the, and there was only uh, Joshua and Caleb uh, left here who was going into the promised land because they'd already been through the wilderness. They had spent 40 years in the wilderness because the spies had, had given an evil report and people had failed to believe in God. A lack of faith in God is a sin. You know, faith is what God wants us to have. He wants us to believe in Him. He wants us to trust Him. You know, I tell you, we need to encourage each other in our faith. We need to build each other up in our faith because when, when the God's people failed to believe in Him, He led them 40 years in the wilderness. He said that generation would not enter into the promised land. Only uh, Joshua and Caleb, who brought back the good report, entered into the promised land. If you, if you look in Leviticus, God speaks there about the priest. The book of Leviticus has to do with the Levitical priesthood. In Deuteronomy, God speaks to the people. And these people had come out of Egypt and wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. They had seen or been taught about idolatry and all the sin that they could, had seen. Think about all the idolatry they had seen in Egypt. And as they went and as they traveled, they saw the Edomites, the Moabites, and the Midianites. They had seen as God led them uh, on the way to the promised land, they had been taught about, this new generation had been taught about the false gods of Egypt. They had seen about the idolatry of the nations, the, the land that they went through. And God was reminding him, uh, reminding him, I don't want you to be like other nations. I don't want you to follow their ways. I want you to follow me. I want you to be a, a, a peculiar people. I want you to be a priesthood to me. You know, I, I've seen countries that don't follow the Lord. Well, folks, let me tell you, we're blessed in America. Amen. I've been to some of the, I've been to Egypt. I've seen Egypt. And I have, I'm not talking against the people, but it's a poor land. And, and, and I think the, part of the reason that they are poor is because they don't follow the Lord. I've been to some of these other countries. I've seen, I've seen this, and I've come to America, and I believe, we are, I believe we're rich in America because I believe God has blessed us. We have the blessings of the Lord. And so God was telling these people, you've been through these other lands. You've seen what happens when people worship, worship false gods, and it's not just to do with uh, being blessed with money. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being blessed with living a moral life. I'm talking about being blessed with families staying together. I'm talking about being blessed the way God wants to bless us. The Lord did not want his people to follow the idols and lifestyles of other nations. Now, of course, when you study the history of Israel in the Bible, you find that they had occasions of idolatry. And uh, God did have to chastise them for that. And again, his purpose was always that they would repent that they would turn back to him. And eventually he did have to take them into captivity. Here in Deuteronomy, there's a warning and a special kind of judgment for idol worshipers though. People who don't worship God, people who worship idols. Deuteronomy 29, 18, lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. Bitter sin. God is saying, idolatry. You're not following me. And when you don't follow me, there's going to be judgment. Bitter sin requires bitter judgment. And that's what the, wormwood, the word wormwood means here, bitter. And so uh, uh, this would seem to be a special judgment. This star would seem to be a special judgment. God will send on the world for idolatry. This third angel, when he sounds, there's going to be a great mountain that falls from heaven, burning like uh, a lamp. It's going to fall into the waters and poison the waters, uh, the rivers and the fountains of waters. And it seems like as you search this out in the Bible, the point I'm trying to make is it seems like that God is punishing not just Egypt this time, but he's punishing the world for not following him. He's punished the world, punished the world for, not, for not listening to him. The world don't want to hear about sin today. The world, don't, in many cases, don't want to hear about salvation today. You know, 
Jesus came and died on the cross to save people. Anyone can be saved today. There is no reason to be lost. The only reason people are lost because they want to be. Once they've heard the gospel, amen? amen. Once they've heard about Jesus Christ and once they've heard that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Friends, that's the gospel. Once people have heard that, all they have to do is accept Christ. God is all, he has open arms. He's willing to forgive people. He's willing to save people. But so many times people reject that message. There is a trend in America and really around the world to turn from the true God, the God of the Bible, the idea that all religions are the same. I've preached on that. I've talked to you about it because it's a growing trend. I keep hearing it. I keep reading it more and more. You know, the Baha'i religion claims God has sent many great teachers, and they list them as equal, Abraham, Krishna, Zoroaster, Moses, Buddha, Jesus, and Muhammad. The last of the great teachers, so they say, of course, is, and I don't know, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this exactly right, Baha'u'llah, born in 1817 in Tehran, and of course, it's a new age. It, it accepts other. They're working, they're working for oneness in the world. They're working for world peace and oneness in the world. And this is a religion that, I am, as I read, I'm told, is growing so quickly. You know why it's growing so quickly? Because people don't want to hear the Bible. It's hard to preach on anything today without stepping on somebody's toes. And so many people don't want to hear about, about uh, sin because they, they don't want to face their sin because if you face your sin, you have to do something about it. And if you face your sin, you have to do something about it. The only thing to do is to give your life to God, to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved. But religion, false religions, idolatrous religions are growing. Islam is another fast-growing religion. According to a new study, uh, it shows that it's not growing as fast as Christianity. There's some false information put out, it seems, here by uh, some people that want people to, not, to think that Islam is growing faster than Christianity. A new, uh, Christianity. A new study shows that's not, that's not the case. Uh, but they grow mostly by large families, not by conversion. But it is a fast-growing religion. And according to the World Christian Encyclopedia, the four fastest-growing religions around the world by births and conversion are Christianity, Islam, Hinduism. And the four fastest-growing religions by conversion only is Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, and Sikhism. Another study shows that the unaffiliated is growing fast in America. You know what that is? That's people who have been taught the Christian faith, but they are not going to church anywhere. And they've just decided that they will have their own idea of religion. They'll have their own idea of salvation. Well, folks, people are, in a many cases, are turning away from God and turning to false religion and turning away from, from the Lord. In the tribulation period, the Bible tells us God is going to send a flaming star that will poison one-third of the rivers of fountains. Now, I, I assume, you know, because chapter 6 starts the, the, the tribulation period, and we understand that the first three and a half years are going to be a time of relatively relative peace in the world because it's going to seem like that the world has found uh, peace and found the answer. Israel is going to be able to rebuild their temple. They're going to be carrying on their sacrifices. And it's going to seem like that the Antichrist is, is uh, finding the answers or giving the answers for the world's problems. And so it may, it may seem like for a while that things are going well. But you see, the, the world doesn't understand. God is not going to turn the reins over to man. God is not going to turn the reins over to the devil. God is the ruler of this world. Amen. And he's going to send the first angel the second angel, the third angel, and these other angels are going to sound. Things are just not going to go as well as man wants them to go because, because when man turns away from God, God is going to send judgment. You see, this is a judgment on the world. 
for worshiping false gods. This is a judgment appealing to people. And again, you know, it's so important that we realize that God is love. Even these, these, these terrible judgments are sent. I, I, believe, I believe God sends them in hopes that people will wake up. Boy, that's something we need to pray about. We need to pray for people to wake up spiritually. We need to pray for our neighbors. We need to pray for our friends. We need to pray for our family. I tell you, the mystery of iniquity is already working today. And the devil's just doing all kinds of things with people's minds and young people in school. Someone told me, I don't remember who it was, uh, who it was or anyone, someone told me that they were talking to a young teenage boy who decided to be an atheist. And uh, uh, his mother asked him, well, why, why all of a sudden she's trying to get him to go to church? I think if I remember that right, that she's trying to get him to go. Why all of a sudden have you decided to be an atheist? She said, I, he said I was taught that in school, not, not, to, not to mess with this religion stuff. People's minds are being messed up. Boy, we need to pray for people to get saved. We need a burden from the Lord. Amen? Amen? We need to be concerned about lost people. And folks, I'm telling you, you can take people and you can't make people believe. Only the Holy Spirit of God can do that. Only the Holy Spirit of God can change people's hearts. And folks, that only comes through prayer. Secondly, wormwood is a judgment God uses to judge immorality. In Proverbs chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, my son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to, mine under, to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood, there's that word. Her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. You see, God is using it the word wormwood here in regard to judgment on immorality. This chapter in Proverbs warns people not to indulge in immorality. The warning here is about the temptation of fornication. There's permissiveness today, not just in this country. I really believe this. You know, America is the last bastion of of. Christianity, it's the, last, it's the last bastion of freedom in the world. And I'm telling you, if, can you imagine what the world would be like if America wasn't here? Can you imagine the evil that would be set forth on the world? I know America's got its problems. I know that, I know that get, things are getting worse and it's getting darker in America. And folks, I, I understand it. But I'm going to tell you, without America, the world would be in almost total darkness. And that's because of the church. That's because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, the warning here is about the temptation of fornication before marriage. Let me tell you something. God made a young man to be clean and to be pure and to hold himself back and to save himself for his wife. Amen? Amen. God made a young woman to be clean and to be pure and to hold herself back and to save herself for her husband. God is not pleased of all this prom prom promiscuity. God is not pleased of all this sin. Sound like an old kind preacher, don't I? Praise God. The warning is about the temptation to not be faithful to one's spouse after marriage. It's called adultery. The writer of Proverbs speaks about the temptation between a man and a woman. When a man is tempted by a woman or vice versa, who offers kisses and immorality. The reader is warned here that the act of immorality will cause a person to suffer as if they had eaten worm, wormwood, bitterness, gall, and wormwood. Sin... You know, the Bible talks about the pleasure of sin for a season. The devil wants people to sin. He puts temptations out there. And people, when people fall into temptation and they go along and, and they, they sin, it may, it may seem right for a while. It may seem good for a while. It may seem good for a long time. But it's going to come to an end. God will judge every sin. 
Be sure your sins will find you out. Amen? You see, that's something people need to, to think about. There is a judgment. If you read the, this, this, this chapter in the book of Proverbs, and let me read that again. My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Boy, I wish they would publish that scripture in every newspaper in America tomorrow. You see, the reader is warned that a person who indulges and violates God's will and, and breaks God's law, it, if you read that, it says uh, sin will take that person's self-respect and the respect that others give him. That person is going to lose the respect of himself. Let me tell you something. You cannot sin and not have a wounded conscience. Sin harms the person who does it more than anybody else. People pay for sin. There's a price for sin. And folks, it's not just, it's not just the big sins, it's the little sins. It's not just a few sins, it's all the sins. God has put in motion certain laws and certain rules that when people sin and they break God's laws, they're going to suffer the consequences. May not seem like it sometimes. It seems like sometimes they're getting away, away with it. You don't see their private life. You don't see what they're going through. The heartache, the trouble, the pain, the discouragement. You don't see the things that they go through because of their sin. Sin takes away. The, the sin of immorality takes away a person's respect for themselves. And it takes away the respect that other people have for them. Immorality costs a person. People who commit adultery. And we have families today who's got two or three, who have you know, been married two or three times. It's expensive supporting two families. Immorality costs a person. I'm just kind of summarizing what the book of Proverbs here says. It brings disease and sickness. There's a cost. And even that is God's appeal to people to wake up and repent and get right and get saved. Folks, let me tell you, people are going to face their sin. Not only are they going to suffer for their sin in this life, listen, if they don't repent of their sins and turn to Jesus Christ, when they stand before God, they're going to, they're going to suffer because they've rejected Jesus Christ. They're going to suffer eternal damnation for their sins. Sin is serious to God. I'm not trying to run people down. I'm trying to get people saved. Amen. See, that's what God is about. That's what the church is about. That's what pre that's what pre you know, I, I was thinking about that. Boy, there's hardly a sin you can preach about today. You get up and preach about sin, you're going to step on somebody's toes and people don't want to hear it. You can't preach about adultery anymore. People don't want to hear it. You can't, you can't preach about uh, you can't preach about lying or stealing, you can't preach about gay, uh, gay rights anymore because people don't want to hear it. Well, you can, but you're going to, you, you know, you understand what I'm saying. But you see, God's purpose, and God's purpose in this judgment, these trumpet judgments, is for people to get saved. The point is that fornication and adultery is like taking wormwood. It poisons a person's life and causes all kinds of, of trouble. Let me tell you something. The devil is in the soul-destroying business. And let me tell you, he's doing a land office business today. Satan wants to destroy the souls of lost people. And I'll tell you something else. Satan wants to destroy the souls of saved people. The devil is in the soul-destroying business. God is in the soul-saving business. Oh, what forgiveness. You say, preacher, I'm guilty of some of this stuff you're talking about. 
Jesus Christ covered that on the cross. Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost. That which was already lost. God loved you before you were ever born. God loved you and knew what kind of sins that you were going to commit. God knew everything that you, you were going to do wrong. And he loved you anyway. Jesus came to die on the cross to save people. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We have to admit our sin. Not to, not to me or anybody else, but to God. Amen. Amen. We have to confess our sin. We have to ask the Lord into our heart. And ask him to save us. This, the judgment of this third angel seems to be a judgment on man's immorality. The world is becoming grossly immoral. I could go through a bunch of this stuff. Young people are, t are being taught to sin today by our society. A 15-year-old girl can get the morning after pill at her school in New York City, it's my understanding, without her, without her parents' consent. Now, she can't get Christian counseling about abstinence and God's love from her school because they've taken the Ten Commandments out. And, they said, and, and they've said to, and I think there's some good teachers in our, in our school system. I believe there's some Christian teachers who would just love to share Christ with some of these kids, but they can't do that because the government has said, you can't do that or you'll be fired. But you see, these young people, they can go and they can go to, to these places and, and they can be taught to sin, but they can't go and get Christian counseling. They will tell them, no, hold yourself back for your husband or for, for your wife. God wants you to be pure. There are 125,000 abortions per day in the world, every day. I don't know about you, but I love kids. What a sad number. 125,000 children will not be born in the world every day. We have families breaking up. No help many times for troubled teens. No one to counsel them, tell them God loves them, God wants to save them, that they're so valuable because God cares about them. Divorce, remarriage is rampant. And it's not just that these are exceptional cases. These are the norm today. You know, if people will not turn to God and let him forgive them and heal them, the Lord has only one choice, and that's judgment. I believe that's what these trumpet judgments are about. Here in the tribulation. You see, I believe that when the tribulation period begins, the Antichrist is going to confirm that covenant with Israel and with many other nations. You see, I don't believe that can happen I don't believe that can take place until, until God allows it. God's in control, amen? amen. But you see, when, when man comes to the place that he will, not, he will not turn to God, he turns to idols and he turns to immorality, I believe God's going to let that, that take place. It's like God drawing a line in the sand. Okay, you want sin? You want to follow the devil? I'm going to draw a line in the sand from this point on. You can go ahead. I'm going to send judgment upon the world. The trumpets are going to begin to sound. Jesus doesn't want to judge people. Praise God for his forgiveness. Oh, isn't it, isn't it wonderful to be able to, to go to the Lord and know that the blood of Jesus Christ is stronger than the devil? Isn't it wonderful to know to go to the Lord and know that the blood of Jesus Christ is stronger than our sins? God doesn't want to judge people. But he tells them about judgment. He tells us about judgment on sin. That's what the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus is going to rapture his church. Jesus is going to come at the end of the tribulation period. Jesus is going to rule in, uh, with his father God in, in the new Jerusalem. But I'm telling you, only people who, who are, whose names are written in the book of life are going to be with him. The last thing. Wormwood is the name of the star that poisons the rivers and fountains of water. Revelation 8, 10, 11. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. Is that scary to you? 
This is hard preaching because I'm preaching something in the future. It hasn't happened yet. I know some people try to say this happened during the Roman Empire, and then they, they point to all kinds of things. No, Revelation is a book of prophecy. And these things aren't going to take place until a certain time in the future, until that tribulation period begins. And then they're going to take place quickly. And I don't know about you, and, and praise God that God tells us what's in the future. We're, we're the only people in the world that knows the truth about the future. We have the Bible. And God is saying to the whole world here, I don't want to bring judgment. I don't want, I don't want to send a, a giant mountain burning with fire and, and, and poison the rivers and the waters and, and people die. I'd much rather people turn to me and get saved, but if people won't turn to him, judgment's going to come. This is scary to me. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. God is saying to the world here, you want to commit sins that are like Wormwood, like bitter, like gall? then I'll send you judgments that are like wormwood, bitter and like gall. Some have thought this star to be a comet. You know, I believe it's literal. And it says here that there was a great star from heaven. I think I said a mountain while ago. But a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. It sounds like this maybe could be a comet. It comes from heaven and it's burning. And they tell us, scientists tell us that a comet, when it, if it would come through the atmosphere, of course, would burn like a lamp. And as it strikes the earth, that it, it co would cause earthquakes and scatter dust that could do all kinds of damage to the earth. I don't know if this is a comet. I do know it's a judgment from God. And it's literal. These things are going to happen. Man, I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. I can face tomorrow and know that there's a lot of things I wouldn't want to happen to me tomorrow. But praise God, Jesus is there with me. Environmentalists tell us that, uh, you know, when this thing comes, it strikes the earth and poisons a third of the water. I don't know if this is the whole earth or if this is an area of the earth. Environmentalists tell us we already have water crisis on planet Earth. They say it's not a problem of not having enough water, but of managing water. In fact, they tell us that's the next great crisis on the Earth. People in some places will have enough water. People in other places will have hardly no water at all. Some places will have clean water, and some places will have polluted water. UNESCO, of course, has a plan to help nations. They have a plan to share water so there will not be war. They want a world government. I always look behind these things. And I, I have to commend them for looking ahead and saying, yeah, you know, we've got a water problem around the world. But it bothers me when they want a committee or they want a government <coughs> and somebody else to tell us how much water we can drink. Amen? Amen? There's always somebody that says that, you know, we can, we can have a group of people to rule over the rest of us. We can have a group of people who will tell the rest of us the, the freedoms that we should have and the freedoms we shouldn't have. I don't like that. I believe God's blessed America. I believe God's blessed America because we serve him. I won't get off on that or I'll be there a long time. See, under the Antichrist and world governance, man may think he has solved the water problem. That may really come to pass. I don't know what's going to happen. But I know the United Nations is working hand over fist, not only 
to, you know, to control uh, the water problems, but to control uh, the environment in a lot of ways. And I can, see a, I can see a scenario, just imagine a thing, where when the Antichrist is in power and he's working and other nations are working with him and they're trying to build this world government, that they may think, they may come to a place where they've, they've uh, uh, rationed the water out to different nations and different things like that, and they may think they have the water problem solved. Just thinking that there's going to be a star fall from heaven. And God is going to say, no, you don't have it so. You see, God's not going to turn this world over to the devil. And God's not going to turn this world over to man. God's will is for people to be saved and have a good life. Are you saved tonight? Do you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior? A man named Dino told how he wanted to be an actor earlier in life he said that was just always his dream because he wanted to make a lot of money and he wanted to be popular and he wanted to be famous he said one of his teachers told him one time he had a charismatic uh, personality and one of his teachers said Dino you should go to Hollywood and you should become an actor it just thrilled him to death to hear that and so uh, after he graduated from high school that's exactly what he did he went to Hollywood and he tried to become an actor he, he became an actor and things were going pretty good for him he was getting some breaks but he said inside he was just miserable until one day he got saved he accepted Christ as his Savior. And then he said, and I'm, I'm telling this from memory, but then he said, you know, acting didn't mean so much to him because he knew Jesus Christ. And then he came to the place that he didn't even want to be an actor. And that's how somehow God changes you. Praise the Lord. And so he left Hollywood and, and he, 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 he took a job. He served the Lord. He says today he's married to a Christian lady. He's, he's a minister of the gospel. He's preaching to others. He's telling other people what happened to him and how to get saved. Hallelujah. Amen. See, God's in the soul saving business. <coughs> Serving sin will destroy people. You see it every day. Jails are full of people that the devil has tricked. Alcohol destroys people. I can't take the Bible and show you a verse that says, Thou shalt not drink. But I can show you where a great man of God called Noah got drunk, and I can show you the results of it. The Bible does show us the results of alcohol. And I can show you case after case after case that the devil has used that awful and godly stuff to destroy life and destroy families, and destroy children, and destroy society. And the same is true about adultery. And the same is true about fornication. And the same is true about sodomy. Sin destroys people. But the blood of Jesus Christ is stronger than any sin. Amen. And God's love is stronger than the devil. If people will just give their life to him, they can be saved. Let's pray.